Well, joining me now on the phone is Max Kaiser, the journalist and broadcaster, live from Paris in France. Max, Goldman and uh, Morgan now subject to regulation. Isn't this what critics of their highly geared uh, dealing have been demanding for years? I'm not so sure, Ashton. I think this is a great way for them now to hide uh, any close examination of their books. I think this is actually in the cards from the beginning because, as you know, Morgan and uh, uh, J.P. Morgan and Goldman Sachs have been involved in a tremendous uh, amount of, let's call it uh, euphemistically, money laundering over the years. And now by becoming a commercial bank, I believe that this is uh, going to insulate themselves from any real close examination because they're going to be behind the firewall, behind Hank Paulson's firewall. You know, Hank Paulson has effectively hijacked uh, the U.S. financial system. He's no different than the 9-11 hijackers as far as I'm concerned. He's a financial terrorist. And he's taken the U.S. banking system to the edge of the abyss, all for the benefit of the shareholders and his cronies at Goldman and J.P. Morgan. The U.S. But taxpayer, the U.S. citizen, unfortunately, is going to get the short end of the stick. But doesn't the new regulatory uh, provision, because they will now be holding companies, mean that we can expect loads of SEC, U.S. Treasury officials all flying around the world to Morgan Stanley and Goldman Sachs' offices, checking all the records, interviewing the staff, checking on probity? Yes, but at the same time, as this coup d'etat has taken place and given Hank Paulson dictatorial powers to determine uh, what is, in fact, the information that should be disclosed or not disclosed, com combine that with Bush's dictatorial powers to declare a state of emergency at, any, at, at the drop of a hat, uh, I don't think we're going to see any of this information is going to see the light of the day, uh, light of day. It's just like, you remember, Building 7 on 9-11 is where they had all those Enron records and the, uh, the, the, those Twin Towers collapsing. Uh, was kind of a cover to keep those records from being examined. You know, these guys will stop at nothing to keep their dirty laundry a secret. So even all, just, uh, even all the course. auditing companies, all the auditing companies that now uh, these these banks will have, be, uh, uh, well, uh, have to be scrutinized by under federal law. To what auditing companies? The ones that have been discredited for the last uh, ten years and going out of business, like Arthur Anderson, who was auditing. Uh, Enron, for example, the auditing companies, the rating agencies, the Treasury Department, the Federal Reserve Bank, this is a criminal syndicate. This should be investigated under RICO. These guys are wholesale thieving of trillions of dollars. Uh, the rest of the world, unfortunately or fortunately, will wake up to the fact that they should probably get out of the U.S. dollar because that's the only tether between the rest of the world and this criminal syndicate on Wall Street headed up by Hank Paulson. So once they figure that out, the dollar goes into permanent decline, and the rest of the world will escape this nightmare of U.S. banking. Um, you know, Hank Paulson has become kind of like a Colonel Kurtz character. He's gone insane. Nobody can stop him. They need to send like a Martin Sheen guy up the river to uh, find him and take him out because he's taking the entire U.S. economy into oblivion. At, at the very least, will they at least have to play, pay uh, more tax? Because after so many years, people have been saying that Goldman uh, Partners, when it was a partnership, they paid uh, very little tax. <laughs> uh, what, uh, are they going to be extradited from some low-tax country with a non-extradition uh, extradition agreement? They're not going to stick around in the U.S. when the Americans are going to have their pitchforks ready to go in and take back their country. They're not going to stick around for that. That's uh, for somebody else to do. Will, will the poor of America now be able to open current accounts, grandmothers with, you know, $10 to spare at Goldman Sachs branch? Ashton, uh, I don't think you're getting the full picture here. In order to bail out these crooks, the Treasury and the Federal Reserve will flood the economy with trillions of dollars which will take the value of the dollar down to zero. Sure, you can open an account at Goldman Sachs with your $100 retirement fund. Unfortunately, that $100 won't buy you any of it. Won't buy you toilet paper. Toilet paper is going to be, you know, this is this is more valuable than the U.S. dollar in a few uh, in a few weeks' time. $100 a sheet. This is $100. I can make I can make dollars right here all I want. Here's a thousand dollars. Here's five thousand dollars. Here's a million dollars. It's all going at complete zero. It's like the Weimar Republic. They'll actually, say, have all the money you want. They want actually, to have how did they pick another how did they billion pick dollars. This? It doesn't make any difference. It's all worthless. How did they pick this $700 billion figure anyway? Because uh, there were some estimates of $1.3 trillion, then it was a five hundred. Where Where are they getting these numbers from? The $700 billion is an arbitrary sum, and it's not the extent to which they can launder this money. It just means that they can't go exceed that level at any given moment of the laundering scheme. Let me tell you how it works. In other words, they got the $700 billion slush fund. They can buy a mortgage for 50 cents on the dollar to help out their banking buddies. 
and then they can resell it for some other chump for 20 cents on the dollar, book a loss for the American public, take it off the $700 uh, billion, excuse me, $700 billion slush fund, and then do, repeat the process over and over again. And they can keep the circular motion of this money laundering scheme, multinational Ponzi scheme going, but now it's like it's a controlled demolition. It's not unlike 9-11, which was a controlled demolition. This is a controlled demolition of the U.S. banking system. Hank Paulson has become the arsonist and pyromaniac in chief. His job is to, floor by floor, take the U.S. banking system down, take the U.S. dollar down to its absolute zero, and do so without upsetting his Chinese masters, his uh, Middle Eastern masters. And he's a tyrant. Under the Constitution, Hank Paulson qualifies as a tyrant and should be taken up on charges. Under the Constitution, it's, it's a constitutional obligation of every American to get Hank Paulson into a court of law as a tyrant. Well, you, you were uh, talking about a question of timing. Um, by the way, Building 7 is a bit more controversial. Uh, that we'll have to save that for another time. But, uh, but uh, as to the timing, as long as the Chinese don't withdraw their dollars, does that mean that they could, have, they could just stave off uh, uh, a real systemic economic collapse in the United States till after the election? 